it's the wind shadows are a big deal. You know, the, a lot of us, we just sit in them or you see other people sit in them and go nowhere, but there's some magic to these wind shadows. I imagine like there is, there is, you know, a, um, we were just having a discussion the other day and we were talking about lanes. And with that, of course, you need to know where the wind shadow is up when we're talking. And, uh, and we were talking about the lanes and then somebody just raised their hand. They, you know, they're kind of a newer sailor and they said, you know, but I'm never in the front. I, there are no lanes. And I'm like, well, yeah, there aren't many lanes in the middle of the fleet. So you really have to know exactly where these wind shadows are and, and they're the nature of them. So you know where to position yourself. And one of my favorite things to do is find a compromise lanes when I'm not up front because nobody else wants to be there either. It's probably not going to get any worse as you funnel into the mark and it gets denser and denser. I want to find one that's going to take me most of the way there with um, not too much loss. Mm. I said wind shadows, but is that is that actually right? Are they wind shadows or what's what's the true? It'd be a multi-part question. What is a wind shadow? And then also how is it different, let's say light air versus heavier, just those two ranges and um, even with the type of boat that you're sailing? Sure, all over the map here. You know, we call them wind shadow, but what are they? We, you know, I, I think like in sailing, we have multiple names for things. Is it dirty air, uh, just dirt, um, you know, disturbed air, uh, bad air? You know, my favorite is we're in crap. <laughs> we're in crappy air. <laughs> but, you know, everybody calls it something different. But the truth is, it's really a combination of, of actual wind shadow. And you'll really see the wind shadow downwind and a, and a symmetric spinnaker you know you're just kind of getting dragged downwind behind that sail is just a vacuum um but you know upwind and and maybe if you're reaching downwind it's more disturbed there's still upwind there's still flow over the sail and i'll draw some of that for you um and within that there's a little wind shadow there's a lot of disturbed area a lot of vortices and you know think rock in a river right like behind it is just this snaking thing and it's not you know, even though you kind of have a range, it kind of moves, right? And then finally, there's a change in direction that's, um, you know, kind of important too. So it's really those three things, shadow, uh, you know, wind shadow, disturbed air, and change of direction. All right, sketch that out for me. Let's paint a little picture. Yeah, we will do. Uh, so started this in anticipation of this question. If the wind's coming straight down the board here, um, you know, we have this, uh, you know, this boat going up wind and to start off with this wind shadow kind of comes off the leech of the main. So there's this, this kind of bubble and somewhere right around here, it starts and it goes down. And I, you know, I always call this the tail and then it kind of goes like this. So kind of directly below and behind, and then all of this is, you know, kind of the zone. And like everything else, some of those edges are kind of abrupt, like this one and this one. And and down here, it kind of tails off. You know, it's it gets less and less effect. Not only does it get narrower, but, you know, kind of like that rock downstream, right below it, it's really bad. And then, you know, you know 20 feet down to the last, 40 feet down, and yeah, maybe you see a little bit, even a hundred yards down, but barely, you know. Very, very jalapeno-like. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's jalapeno, shape of jalapeno. Good point. I never thought of that. <laughs> cool. So, so that's the general shape of it. Um, where uh, talk us through what, like, you know, where is the worst of it and where is the best of it? Yeah. So you know, the worst of it is kind of the right here you know so maybe i'll drag out another boat here and and kind of get it going that way but uh i can't find my boat here but the bottom line is that somewhere around here is kind of really abrupt like if you fall into here you're in trouble um right here is really bad like if you're just above it we all know that we can get off the starting line or something we're just above a boat and we're there for a long time we got one bad wave we got to put the bad bow down just a little bit we get a little closer and all of a sudden we can feel it we're heading lower and we get sucked in so right in this zone is just just terrible uh you know right 
here is the wor worst, you know, like kind of like here. Sorry, We've got a primitive tools. Yeah, primitive tools. Right here is really bad. Um, you know, here is fine, but right here is the transition. Like this is okay. Hmm. You know, this is okay. Okay. <laughs> And this is where if you fall in, you just think the the you know the wheels fall off. So this is super bad here. And then you know it kind of tapers off. Like it's not as bad here and not as bad. And you know, it's not like this goes away. There's still some effect way down here. It just kind of tapers off the effect. What about the wind strength? You know, I, I always wondered about this. You know, I, I think it's I'm not sure this distance. So I always think this distance, if I had to oversimplify the distance, right? Um, my rule of thumb is always eight bolt lengths. And it's eight bolt lengths of the boat that's giving you uh, the dirt. So if this is eight bolt lengths. And like I said, to start off with, it's, you know, it's not like at seven bolt lengths, it's terrible and nine bolt lengths. It's pretty, you know, this is kind of a linear effect or maybe it's exponential. I don't know. But I know when I'm right here, it's awful. It's a little less bad, a little less bad and barely notice it. Ten bolt lengths out, you know, eight, ten bolt lengths. But, you know, I kind of wonder if that distance is more or less the same, whether it's light or heavy. Mm. Um, but I do think that when it's heavy, I don't mind being a little closer to here if I need to, because I'm already up to hull speed. I'm not going to go that much slower. But when it's light, if I'm, you know, if it's blowing five and it's, this wind shadow is giving me, I think the difference is bigger. Like this wind shadows, it's not five, it's three. You know, that's, I think if it's blowing 20, it's 17. Like the percentage difference is much. And certainly the difference in speed between five and three knots in your boat is just devastating hmm. so i think in my mind this extends out further if it's light and it shrinks in if it's heavy but i'm not sure that's because the wind shadow is actually any different i think it's just because the effect on the boat's different either way i don't want to be here if it's light you know i want to be back you know i, I if i'm going to tack below somebody i'm not going to tack here I, I back here i start to feel a little safer this might be a little 2.0 on this point, so we, we can just look at it quickly. But does the, as a sailmaker, um, you know, we've got these bigger square top. Does the sail plan affect that in any way? You know, where, you know, the sails might be bigger and more square like. Does the wind shadow grow in yeah. some exponential way? Yeah. So you look at a square top, uh, look at a Genoa on a, on a boat versus a jib, you know, mm -hmm. a single sail boat. Um, all of that makes a difference. So, if you have a boat with a large sail plan, you know, this might be 10, you know, and large being large and high. So square top versus, you know, like a triangular sunfish sail, it's probably less because so much of the sail here is down low. Um, you know, so this eight bolt lanes is, first of all, I'm not even sure how to judge eight bolt lanes. It's, it's, you know, how many mast heights, you know, you kind of got to scale this a little bit. You know, if you had a square top main in a Genoa, you know, that would be massively bad. Um, but, you know, related to that is, you know, each sail plan is different. But, you know, if you did this on a, you know, on a, on a single sailboat, you know, this might be pretty different, right? So, you know, just kind of bear with me while I, you know, get rid of this, uh, this main sail, right? Get rid of that well maybe i'll just delete it just to, <laughs> <laughs> just to get it out of there but um you know if this were instead if we had um you know a single sailboat typically you know the reason you can sheet so hard in a single sail in a boat with a jib is that the the jib is redirecting the wind so you keep the traveler centered and even above center if it's lighter air boom is basically centered lots of hook in the main and you're pointing off of that you're the jib is making that possible so without that the main's got to be out further you can't design the sail with as much hook the boat would just round up and stall 
so I think what happens then is this wind shout to windward kind of goes away. Mm. You know, I find in a and and it becomes more of a you know a blunt a wind shadow right here, you know, kind of changes the nature of it. So I find in a single-handed boat, you know, if I start off the line really close to somebody, you know, what I would expect in my J24, J70 or something to be in wind shadow, I am not in an MC scow or something. Cool. Point being that the type of boat and the type of sailplane does sort of... Uh... Right. You got to know the nature of your boat. Assuming you're sailing a one design fleet, you can kind of get to know that boat pretty well. And if you're not, and you're somehow in fleet with other boats, you know, don't tack under the, uh, the far 40. All right. So the, um, the most of us are those of us battling it out in the middle of the fleet. Um, at some point in time, you can't just send it out to the corners because they tell us not to. Um, you're going to have to find some bad air somewhere to get up the course. What's um, when you're dealing with this, um, what, what are sort of your, your overall tactical plays? Yeah. So let this kind of go around near, let's, let's explore the edges of each of this zone. So, you know, we already talked about the fact that if you're close to this, you're actually kind of safe because this is a, unlike this, that tapers off at the tail. This is a pretty abrupt line. Like you're fine until you're not, right? But the truth is, if you're here, you know, we all know what this is. Like um, you're always snaking around a little bad set of waves. You got to put the bow down. Maybe you get a tiny little header for a second. You got to put the bow down. And, you know, you just don't get to do that. Or if you do, you get all of a sudden you hit that edge and the wheels fall off very quickly. We all have been there, right? The bad start and get sucked in pretty quickly. So I find this, although it's very clear, it's not sustainable. Um, if I'm stuck here, I will, um, if I'm absolutely stuck here, I will pinch and go as slow and high and try to survive as long as I can until I can escape. Because if I fall in, that is an instant several boat length loss. Okay, so that's that. Um, that effect kind of continues down to here, but there's kind of a surprisingly okay lane, like three boat lanes back. Uh, it, similarly to this, it's a little fragile. You get that little header and you fall in, but you can kind of hang here. Or, or maybe if you're here, you're actually not in bad shape at all, right? So you're, um, you know, there's kind of these lane that people don't realize is okay back here and straight behind somebody eight point lanes back is actually pretty safe um we talked about that this is sort of not you know it's not black and white down here like this is super dense air here uh super turbulent air and this is terrible you're gonna lose you're gonna go half the speed of this boat even in a breeze if you're right here and then the effect gets less and less and less and less. And, you know, and somewhere eight-ish boat lanes out, depending on your sail plan and all that stuff, um, it gets less and less. And, you know, if it's a Genoa boat and it's light air, I don't want to be here. But if it's pretty windy, I'm fine here. Go back up to the top again when you're uh, on the uh, the weather hip there. Yeah. Um, you know, where... You know, you're trying to live here, you're trying to live there. You mentioned like, and then all of a sudden the wheels falls off. But what are what are some clues to know that, okay, well, the wind shadow is starting to affect me other than, you know, because you're talking uh, fractions and boat speed. Is it the, you know, the telltale start to sort of get a little wonky or, you know, what what's sort of the first thing to give away? I find that I end up um, the equivalent of headed. And I, I don't know if that, if the wind is actually heading me. My, my guess is it is, right? So you know, I'm sailing in this apparent wind, so I'll draw that. So my apparent wind is, you know, if you know, I'm this blue boat, my apparent wind is not the true wind, right? It's coming from here, right? But I'm pretty convinced that in this wind shadow, you kind of have these little tiny arrows. You know, it, it kind of redirects the wind a little bit like this, I think, you know, just a little that way, right? 
and it kind of coming off the back of the main. It's, you know, the jib redirected it, you're sheeting in, the main is hooked. And so I think the very first sign that I get is that I just immediately get this pretty significant header. You know, I'm essentially sailing in as soon as I hit that wind here, you know, this wind changes to more in front of me. And it, I just have to bear off a lot. And as soon as I do that, then you close the gap even more. And it's, it's like instant, like you're okay, okay, okay. Just hits your jib, you're done. Hmm. And then what do you do? Well, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could probably do, uh, so there's, there's really three options. Uh, one is if you have no choice, you figure out how to just point and do terribly. What you're trying to do is, is live to fight a little more. And, and you're maybe if you can pinch and go slow, you can end up here. Mm. So that's one option. So you're going to lose immediately a bolt length or two straight back. But what you don't want to do is fall into here because I think you're going to lose four bolt lanes instantly. You're going to lose four of that eight instantly. Um, there is another trick that I use a surprisingly often. It's the reach through. Mm. So if I get that and I see it coming and I can just bear off and get a lot of speed and shoot through, I can end up here. Well, actually, I probably end up, I don't end up there. You know, I'll end up here, which isn't so bad. I've done that a bunch at like a world, J24 world or something. There's one, one pincher below you and you look over your shoulder and there's 98 boats there. There's no way out. And I don't want to get in there, sucked in there, there, but they do have a, for whatever reason, there's a little gap below. I'll just go fill this gap. And then I'm like, whew, that was way better than tacking into the crowd or staying in this dirt. Yeah. So the point is, you know, if, if you need to live on this tack for a while, either behind slow to set yourself up kind of behind it or, or dive and find a find a cleaner yeah. lane. There, there is no other option, yeah. you know, like there is besides tacking out, right? Yeah. I think we're going to the assumption that we can't. So the last place, which if I'm going to have to set up on somebody, this is where I'm going to set up. And that's below all this stuff. So uh, this is your safe zone. Even here is okay. Hmm. And the way that you, you know, this is the one, one of my favorite spots because most people don't think it's okay. So if I attack just ahead of this wind shadow, um, you know, people are pretty conservative about having a boat above them. So unless somebody tacks here, then, you know, they're going to go beyond or tack down here. They don't like to be here, even though it's actually pretty good. Mm. So that's one of my safe zones is right here. So anywhere along this curve is just fine. And when you get here, now they're in the bad zone. Like, you know, I'm going to get this guy. If I'm, if we're equal speed, I'm still going to beat this person eventually because they're going to be fighting to stay above me. And they don't, that one time they have to dip into my back when they're in trouble. So one of the questions I always have is how do you know, am I here or I here? Like, how do you, you know, it's not written anywhere, right? Like, it's not like there's something laser pointers on the water, you know? Mm. Um, and the answer is if my apparent wind is free, I'm free. So even though the true wind I am in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm sailing in. I'm sailing in my apparent wind. That's already gone. You know, we're we're in motion. So the 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 wind shadow is moving away. So as long as my apparent wind is free. And the other reason I really like this one is if you're up here, right? If you're on the other side, if anything goes wrong, you have to bear off and then you're in the dirt. Even here, even though it's not terrible, here you have a safe out. If anything goes a little wrong, you just put your bow down a little more, get yourself a little more separate. You get like here, you're like, you just kind of bear off a little and get there. You really don't lose anything. Put yourself in foot mode for 15 seconds and you're fine again. Okay. We've heard um, about using, you know, the other boat's windexes that supply in this wind shadow upwind. 
situation. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, we can cover that more. We're going to, I think we got to do this for downwind because it behaves very differently. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different differences for downwind. You know, I'm looking at my Windex to see where I am free. I am looking at my index to see Windex to see if I am free. You know, if this person decides to go high and slow and therefore his parent wind moves aft, doesn't really, that's not what affects me. I need to know where my Windex is pointing. And really, I'm just feeling it on my face, right? Like if I'm, if it's coming, if I can feel it in front of the boat, I'm fine. If I'm getting near the boat, I just put a little bit in foot mode, get out. Easy enough. Yeah, kind of is. So one, uh, now your, your boats are going off on port tack kind of uh, brings up a good point that, um, you know, sometimes, you know, off a, off a busy start, um, you got to bail port tack. Um, I guess it could also be true of, you know, going around the lure gate or going through the lure gate or going back into upwind traffic and those kind of stuff. But off the start, you know, this port tack, what's going on with the wind shutter there and, and how is that different? Well, I mean, um, yeah, so let me just erase some of this stuff and put ourselves in a different zone here. Um, so we got these little boats down here, if I could select them. Um, and if this is sort of off the starting line and suppose these uh, these green boats are starboard tackers, you know, the wind behind them is just awful, right? Because you've really used up all those tools that you have to go do it, right? Um, make us move up the course a little bit and move these guys down. Yeah, let me reposition everything. So if you're coming off the starting line and you are, you know, all these starboard tacker boats and this is you, Let's get this guy out of here. He's launched. He port yeah, he's launched. launched. You don't have to worry about him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the nature of that, you know, we didn't kind of finish the zone here, right? So if this is kind of the wind shadow, right? Right. And it goes a little further than that, but that's okay, right? You can kind of see that there is no, if you're behind this pack and starboard, there is no out. Like if there's a stack of them, unless that reach through I talked about, there would happen to be a gap. I got lucky. If there was three boats below him, that wouldn't have worked. But what does happen is, you know, we talked about the, where the, you know, kind of went like this and you get headed here, right? You know, it's all kind of doing that. There's all this wind is redirected a little bit this way, right? I'm exaggerating. It's probably very subtle. But this is the true wind down the board. The true wind in your view here is kind of this way a little bit. So not only are you in dirt if you're on starboard here, but you're in a header in dirt. It's awful, right? So... The fact that you're in dirt on port going by these guys is a little bit offset by the fact that you're in a lefty. So when you duck this pack, yeah, you're in less wind and it's disturbed, but at least you have a little bit of a lift as you go past their stands, past their sterns. And sometimes I, I did this the other day. I, I got a bad start and I tacked and I ducked three boats and I felt like I was shot out like a cannon on the other side. Mm. And I look back and I'm like, I think I'm in the same rung as those boats I just ducked. And that's why, because you got this false lift for a little while. It gets you shot out and you're going. So the summary is uh, you don't, you don't want to hang in the wind shadow, but you can take advantage of it on the, uh, on the port tech cross. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. If you see that nice, do a little duck and you get three cerns, you know, that was the perfect thing. I only had the small, I had a bad enough start that <laughs> I was that, half boat length, three quarters boat length behind. So I had a quarter boat length dock and they were all in the same line to a nice solid dock and boom, I was feeling pretty good. All right, cool. Um, all right, one more 2.0. Then, um, you know, you see this quite a bit, you know, on boats on the final starboard ley line to weather mark and yeah. uh, this belief if you want it, you kind of want to put a little more distance on the boat behind you, you ease the sails, a little more reachy, a little more disturbed air coming off the back of the sails. Is that true? 
Oh, if you want to give you, somebody make, dirt? How do you make the wind shadow worse, I guess? Is, uh, yeah. yeah, right. So this is a team racing move, right? So, uh, you know, you want to really slow somebody down. You know, we talked about the fact that it was, you know, largely, you know, we could take a look at this boat, you know, draw on, um, you know, that, you know, we could just take, Hang on, let me get draw this. Let me draw the sails back in because this is that's an important piece of this. And if I draw my blue sails back in, you know, if my main is like this, right? I'm going up wind, and in this other boat, I'm trying to give a wind shadow to, right? And so he's there. If I over trim this, if I let it out, it 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 disturbs the sail left, you know, less and think, you know, just think about if I let it out till it's luffing, sure. We have some turbulence, but I wouldn't be redirecting it. But if I over trim this main instead of this, it will become more of a wind block, you know, I make this super hard. If I trim this way in, it'll become more barn door. Like I suppose more barn door. Like, and now it becomes more of a, now you're disturbing the flow off the back. As soon as you get the dis the flow disturbed off the back, now it becomes a vacuum instead. You know, instead of wind flowing, you've stopped it and it has to go around it. And that looks more like downwind when you're just getting pushed downwind, drag mode, right? Instead of flow mode. Mm. You can really slow somebody down in team racing doing this. So if you really needed to do that, you're just gonna... be aware that you're slowing yourself down as well. All right. Yeah, right. And you're not well, also be aware <laughs> that they're pro they're probably not gonna buy you a beer at the uh at the bar. This is true. This is true. All right. You well, know, there's a lot to wind shadow. So I think next time we hook up, we should probably uh cover downwind then, which um yeah. I know it is actually really fascinating, right? When you have uh, asymmetric boats and symmetrics and things are different and kite sizes and all sorts of fun stuff. So we have to add a little more time to that one. I would actually like to add one last thing to this yeah. and, you know, back to my original, how this all started was somebody asked me, you know, like, well, I'm, a, I'm not in the front of the fleet. I don't have the option of, of good lanes. How do you get a good lane if you're in the back of the fleet? Well, the answer is, first of all, you don't, right? Like you're trying to find a compromise lane, but my favorite compromise lane is Let's draw this wind shadow again, right? My favorite compromise lane is right here. Any, somewhere around here, and there's two reasons for it. You know, so, well, they're all have to do with what other people are willing to do. I'm barely losing anything because I'm far enough away and nobody is going to tack here right? They're not going to attack me. It's not going to get any worse. So if I'm here, right, you know, sitting in this, this spot right here, you know, nobody's going to attack there. They're going to attack mm -hmm. here, which I'm clean on. They're going to attack up here, which I'm clean on. There's no, nobody in their right mind would tag there. And yet I'm barely being affected. Everywhere else I tack, somebody can tack on me and get me. So this is the sustainable lane going out to the left corner, getting near the late left lay line, this boat tax. I'm like, perfect. I'm going to tack them. They're going to drag me all the way to the mark. Everybody's gets coming in. That's ahead of me is going to position somewhere else besides right here. Mm. They will overstand and go out here before they tack on me. Not because they care about me, but because they don't want to be in dirt. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a good, good safe yeah. place to be. Yeah. So that it's really the only safe place. Mm. It, and it's terrible. Like you're you're looking up wind and your your parent wind is directly on that boat. And you're like, well, oh. all right. It could be worse. Yeah, that's that's all I got for you. All right, cool. Well, let's uh next time we meet up, let's do some downwind action, which I suppose, you know, you'll be doing with all those boards behind you at some point over the break, maybe. Yeah. And the, um, you know, the way downwind is unique is that you can move your apparent wind around so much upwind, mm -hmm. bear off a little and head up a little, it really doesn't change much. So if it's pointing at somebody, it's hard to get it out of there. Whereas downwind, you have this tool that you're, 
your apparent wind can change radically. And what you care about is what you do to your apparent wind. So cool. Pretty neat. All right. Well, thanks for the intel and the insight as always, Mike. Appreciate it. All right.